this is what we're worried about. There's tons of these little baby rattlesnakes everywhere. Everywhere. So we gotta kill them. So, no. so we just gotta get rid of them because what happens is we go and we start strapping all of these boulders and they're underneath and then they bite my finger. It's rattlesnake season up here. We found three of them this morning already. So that just, you know, adds to the excitement, I guess, right? <laughs> Hopefully this video doesn't show a trip of me going to the hospital. Hey everybody, it's Jack from Atlantis Water Gardens. I'm here for part two of this massive fire pond. We're about an hour and a half east of LA out here in California. We got an amazing amount of work done in just seven days. If you haven't seen that, click the link right here. Go watch part one, get up to speed. We are about to start building an incredible waterfall into this pond. The pond is just looking fantastic. Matt got about 50,000 gallons of water filled up in here. It still has another four feet to go. So this will be well over 100,000 gallons of water. This pond will be used as a firefighting pond. They do get a lot of wildfires here up in the mountains. And it's also gonna be a huge attraction for what Matt wants to do on the property, which is make it a gathering spot. So weddings, events, parties. He wants to be able to use this place and make it extremely interactive. And this is the centerpiece of that. The intake skimmer is coming along real nicely. We got two vaults on the backside. We're gonna be pulling about 60,000 gallons of water through here. Massive amounts of water, and I'm gonna show you why we need that. We've got destination points like this spot here. We're actually talking about building a deck over this, maybe cutting it around this boulder. Just check this out. You could sit on this boulder and take in this just awesome. This looks like almost a glacier pond, something you would see definitely in nature. I love the gigantic boulders just protruding out. That water is gonna come up way on this rock, so you're gonna have a serious amount of water in here. We got a jumping rock right here, so when you're up on top of this, you got about like eight feet of water below you. Dive off here, front flip, back flip, whatever you're into. And then there's gonna be another gathering spot over there, so we're talking about maybe a structure, seating area, fire pit, a lot of options, they got a set of stairs coming down into the pond. But what we're doing here this week, we're gonna be creating some gigantic waterfalls. And in order for that to happen, we need some gigantic rocks, and man, do we got them. That sucker is huge. You're talking about a seven foot tall rock that probably weighs a good six or seven tons. Good thing we got that guy right there to help us out. I really love this spot because the water's gonna be coming inside here, about two and a half feet deep. You'll be able to walk through the water right up to here. So we're gonna use this part of the rock as a waterfall. We're gonna get a flat one in behind it so we can disperse some more water this way. Talking about setting a rock here so you can almost walk inside of it like the waterfall could be falling on your shoulders. That's gonna be awesome. But just check out, check out this rock quarry we have to work with. Some of these boulders, I mean that boulder is bigger than a car. Just massive. There's so much nice rock here, it's gonna be hard to pick the one to start with. I have no idea how Matt got this thing up here. Man, I'm like a kid. I love big machines and big rocks. We are starting to excavate behind the main frame rocks in the waterfall that are going into the pond for the next pooling section. So we want to cut back. From the back of our rocks, which are right here, we're going to go back about 12 or 13 feet in this excavation. That's going to be the next set of waterfalls that spills into this pool. We're taking that down about eight inches below where the weir stone is. What that's gonna do is allow for some pooling. So we want the water to fall off, have a good six or eight inches of water in there, and it'll stream around and then fall off cascades back into the pond there. 
This is a critical point for the structure of our pond because here is the pond liner coming up behind this humongous rock. This next section is going to get a whole separate piece of liner. So we're going to have a liner that goes from behind the machine all the way down this excavation and overlap in front, like right behind this rock, in order to keep it waterproof, which means when we get done here, we'll fold back all our rock pad, we'll fold this liner back, then we'll put that other liner down inside behind all these rocks, where we can then backfill it all with gravel and cinch it in, essentially acting like a shingle, so any water that gets behind the rocks stays on the liner and makes its way back into the pond. Old guys rule, huh, bud? Yeah, bud, right? I'm at that age where it's like, I can almost wear it with 100% confidence, right? <laughs> Um, this is fun. I'm looking at the size of that machine and the fact that some of these boulders are too big even for that machine to pick up is exciting for me, right? It's, and I think it's exciting for you. But this is looking so good and, and we're making these cuts and they're massive, massive cuts. Like we're digging in three, four, five feet of soil and we've got boulders that are going to fill that whole space and so it's just when you can work with large rocks like this and then push large volumes of water over the top, you start taking that natural look to a whole nother level. We're off to a foggy start for day two, and the pond's got about another 35,000 gallons of water in it, and it looks great. It's still gotta come up a good 18 inches to two feet, and we've just got water coming into the intake bay here. All in all, that'll have about 18 inches of water in it. That's where everything's gonna be drawn in. So this is the collection point for any debris that falls in the pond, and this is where it gets suction from the pumps that are pulling from the pump house and the waterfall is just looking magnificent. We got some monsters in here yesterday. We're talking rocks that are every bit of like seven, eight, nine tons. That is the biggest rock that we have. We were able to get it set and it's starting to look like it belongs. We're starting to nestle it in with some other more rocks around it. By the time it's done, this will look like one gigantic rock outcropping. Now we can get focused on creating this next cascade. This is the one that will actually be coming out of the constructed wetland filter, which will be up behind this. This is a, almost five feet of elevation. So we're looking to probably drop like this and then turn and drop like this. Now with waterfall building, that might change. We might find a rock that lets us go just straight vertical right down to the bottom. We haven't found it yet, but we're gonna get looking this morning to see if we can find something that fits there. If not, we'll probably split it up and have it come into two drops, which will still be freaking awesome. It's time to get these monster machines fired up and go pick some rock, start building some waterfalls today. All right, so we're pulling this rock forward. That's gonna allow this liner to slide in back behind the other one. This liner comes up and over the other liner, which comes like this. Now we're gonna backfill a little bit of gravel right in there, fold this whole thing back, and then dig out for our next fall. The 
pond's been filling all day. We've got almost 100,000 gallons in here right now, and we are rocking on this waterfall. We got three separate sets of cascades happening right now. This is gonna be really cool. We wanna do a beach area where the gravel just kinda of comes in from up here on the landscape and down in. So it'll be a great visual. You'll see that set of waterfalls right there. Just look at these monster boulders that we're using. We took this one, we brought it out in front and sloped it in towards where the waterfall is. The idea here is that little cupped area, we're looking to get water off of that into like a pooling area and it'll come down here and sheet off in front of it. I like doing waterfalls like that. It's very natural looking where you've got a cascade here and then one that actually falls off in front of it. That'll go into a pooling area which then will feed these two sets of waterfalls. This area here coming off the top elevation, there's be a set of stairs down to a landing area somewhere in here because there's gonna be a big waterfall right about there coming out of our constructed wetland filter. That's gonna be a spot for people to take pictures. If they're sitting here, kinda of nice little rounded patio space, that in the backdrop, it's gonna look absolutely gorgeous. My favorite thing to do is work with big rocks and I mean, they don't come much bigger than this. <laughs> Woke up this morning to 113,000 gallons in the pond. When Brian and I were out here for just over a week last time, we set over 300 tons of rocks in this pond. Starting our third day, we've only got maybe 50 tons set in the waterfall. Hello. Things go much slower when you're building waterfalls. Down here, rock comes in. We can make it fit a lot of different places. Up here, rock comes in. It has to fit in a specific spot, in a specific way for it to look right. This is where all the art comes in, is the waterfall. Like the pond definitely requires some major skills, but this is where you really test your metal, especially working with these big boulders. This rock, you probably can't tell, but it's slightly pitched to the left. And we did that for a reason. We're gonna get most of the water coming off that main rock and then splitting down around this boulder here. But we're also gonna get water on just the left side of this rock spilling in. Because it's pitched like that, it's gonna kinda keep it off to the side there. We might have to do a little bit of creative foam work over here once it's running and we do some tweaking, but that's our idea. And then up behind, probably one of my favorite style waterfalls is when we get a main drop, but we're also feeding around the side and slicing off in front of it. So we'll have that two waterfall effect where this one's falling in front of this one. That'll be the main cascade, but this will be the auxiliary one that gives that really awesome natural looking effect. It's so cold. I don't know if you can see it in my eyes, but like the ice is like frosting over on my eyes. And I don't know how we managed to bring this weird weather everywhere we go, literally everywhere we go, but it's here. We started with 100 degrees on Saturday. It's I think 47 degrees right now. There was even a little bit of ice on the deck, but nonetheless, in three days, we've gotten an enormous amount of work done. I'm guessing we've set about 50 tons of boulders um, from the bottom waterfall all the way up. We have one, two, three main drops with all kinds of splits and turns and twists and pools and lights and everything else. Now it's the last four, we have four more days to go. It's the last push. We're gonna come up here and really start giving this thing some shape, maybe some unique peninsulas. This, I think both of us and all of you guys are probably gonna be really excited about because this is gonna be more of this kid-friendly little wading pool up in here with some fun little waterfalls coming in off of the side. So tune in next time and check out what we're gonna create in the second part of this waterfall. Hit that subscribe button. We're here every week doing this thing, bringing you beautiful water features, water feature builds. We'll see you on the next one.